All right, today I'm going to be showing you my latest build, my Giga Drill. So, why did I decide to make a drill? Well, to be honest, I didn't even want to make a drill in the first place. What happened was I was working on a submarine. I was trying to make a submarine, and I had so many problems. It, the thing with submarines is that when you rotate them, you always, well, you have trouble because you rotate and the water comes in. And that's because you're rotating into the water. The air does not rotate with you, and you just... Uh, it's just a catastrophe. So I made this big pool to try my submarines out. And I'll show you guys what happens, right? So I, I wanted to make something nice and sleek. You know, a classical submarine. So I made this. And disaster struck when I turned this. So if I turn this crank, I'm going to turn around and, oh, the whole thing floods. That's because we rotated into the water. If only air would rotate along with us, then we would not have this problem. So I, you know, this was my first attempt at a submarine. And the water just keeps coming in. Oh, that's, okay. You get the idea. So yeah, this is my first attempt at a submarine and um, yeah, it didn't go well. So I made a few more models, but I just, I kept having problem after problem. So I just said, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a break from building things. I'm going to go play survival a little bit. So I got thinking, oh, what should I do in survival? Well, I should mine some ancient debris. I need a drill to mine some ancient debris because, honestly, it's a pain in the ass trying to dig out that stuff. You got lava falling down. It's just, eh, it's not fun. I don't like grinding for stuff. I like, you know, a lazy person will spend 10 times more time to invent an easy way of doing things. So that's what I did. So... I started working on this little drill here, this little thing, and then I realized that, wait a sec, the drill needs to be fluid proof because there's lava in the nether. So basically, I had to make a drill that that's basically also a submarine because it has to be fluid proof. So I made a drill that's fluid proof because I was fed up with making fluid proof submarines. That's kind of funny, honestly. So this is the drill. I will show you what it can do. So let's just get in here. You'll notice the walls are three thick. Uh, by experimentation, I realized that a thickness of three was necessary uh, to prevent getting flooded. Um, that's The design is circular because uh, when we rotate, well, we don't want to rotate into the liquid. So to prevent rotating to liquid, we just rotate um, within a, you know, an equal radius all the way around so that uh, it's air all over the place. So we've got some buttons here we can turn around, and we can go forward. So if I hit this button once, I'll go forward once. It's a lot like my airship designs. Well, the controls are like the airship, but the design of the engine itself is a little bit different because when you're, when you're digging, you're not going at as fast as you would be because it takes time to drill through um, the, uh, the materials, the stone or the the ores, especially ancient debris, is very long. So if I just had a regular sequence gear shift, um, it wouldn't work because it would try to go forward for a few seconds and then stop. So everything here is based on redstone contacts. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what I mean by this. I set up a little experimentation area where I have some platforms um, that will show you the uh, the functioning of this. So the first one here, well, it has a sequence gear shift. And if I turn the sequence gear shift, if I activate it, well, you'll see that it tries to turn 90 degrees and it's drilling, but it's just gonna give up because it can't turn. So it's not actually a 90 degree turn it's it's a timed it's a hidden timed turn and it will turn for an amount of time that will normally turn at 90 degrees if it wasn't impeded by the stone so what has to be done is well a setup with some um, redstone contacts so basically i have some latches here these are not toggle latches these are regular latches they get triggered by the uh, signal to start turning and uh, is stopped by the um, signal when the redstone contact is in position. So we have four redstone contacts on the turning part 
and one on the fixed part. So I'll do a demonstration right here. So we'll turn, and it's gonna it's gonna try to get through this. It's gonna cut through the. You know, it's easy to cut through the um, the deep slate, but the the ancient debris takes a while. So we're just gonna watch this thing cut through the ancient debris. It, it's gonna take a while, but at least at least you see that it's going through it. It's cutting it. It's not just running and then giving up. It's gonna. It's not a quitter. It's almost there. It's almost there. It's going to cut through this. Just a few more seconds. There we go. And voila. It turns around and it stops. So this is the sort of turning mechanism that we have to do. The other um, sort of consideration that I had to do was, why, why is it so hard to make something that's fluid proof, right? It's like, well, you just put some, you know, I put fluid down and, you know, oh, look. It's, it's, we're not wet under here. This is fluid proof, right? Well, no, because once I start moving this a bit, you'll see that, well, it stops being fluid proof. So now I've pushed it out. And what, what, what the heck? It, did this just drip down through it? It did. It definitely did. Your eyes are not playing tricks on you. So every time you move it, it gets worse because as far as I can tell, what's happening is the the structure is becoming sort of, um, well, it kind of, it, it, it's treated as if it's not actually there as it's moving. So you see, every time I move it, the water just spreads more and more. Um, so the solution to this is to always have part of your build that's not moving. So I'm going to go ahead and place a sponge there to clean up that water. So there you go. So there's still just one source block, but it just, uh, it just spreads and it's a, it's a terrible pain. So let's go back to my current drill. You can see I have some uh, some previous designs that didn't make it. It's a lot of it's a lot of steps when you when you build things. So we'll head over back to the drill and I'll show you the specific things that are um, present in it. So you'll already notice it's got a window. You, you can see in front of you, even though you're mining, well, you're just going to be looking at rock, but at least eh, it's cool to see what's out in front of you. Okay. So I showed you the controls. Um, let's have a look at the engine. So the engine is, um, well, this is basic design that I've used in my airships, but it's a little bit different. I, I kind of set part of the... Uh, in case fans into the walls to save space, you know, I save space even though there's a lot of empty space in here because it has to be circular, so. Um, it still actually saves on the length. So this is actually a pretty big build because I, well, I, I needed, I wanted to be able to have, you know, enough length out in front. So it's not uh, the most efficient build in terms of space, but it's what I came up with. So if we go down here, we have the steering controls, so it's basically the circuit I showed you earlier. It all works by, um, there's a in-case fan that we turn on, and uh, there's this gear shift for uh, changing direction. I'll go back up here. You see, this would normally be a sequence gear shift, but it is a... It's a gear shift, right? So there's no clutches. So the, the engines are always uh, engaged in using uh, stress units, right? So there's no free stress units right now. They're 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 using it. It's kind of like the pistons when they're retracted. Well, they're always retracting. When they're extended, they're always extending. So that's the guts of it. Um, if we come out here, well, we can see the roof, and I made it out of glass. So you can see the, the inside, right? So there's a gap here, there's a secondary chassis, and there's this other chassis right here. So why is it like this? Well, this secondary chassis, what happens is that when it advances, it, it'll it stay in position, right? So remember I said that for water to not go through you, you have to have a part of the build that's stationary. Well, that's what this does. This other chassis right here, this stays still when you rotate. So I'm going to... Go ahead and get a redstone uh, linked controller and show you guys what this looks like in practice. So we'll 
set that to the left turn. That'll be forward. And that'll be right. So if I come up here, and I'll actually be better if I show you like this. Uh, so you see how that secondary chassis moved forward and the secondary chassis was kind of pushed forward. That uh, will keep the water from getting in. If I don't do that, um, it can get waterlogged. Now for the turning, what's going to happen is this chassis here is going to be stationary while the rest of it is going to turn. So you see that? That also stops water from getting through. So to prove that, I will put a bucket of water. I'll put a few buckets of water around here. And I'll go inside, and we'll see what it looks like from the inside. All right, so the water's coming down the front. So it looks like we're getting flooded, but we're not. So that's why you have to have it uh, be three thick. If it's not three thick, um, then you um, then you get water infiltration, and that kind of ruins your day because well, you have redstone, you got wash some stuff away, and you, you want to stay dry when you're mining. You don't want to be you don't want to get wet. All right, same thing for let's say if we go forward. There we go. If that was in three thick, we would also be flooded uh, from going forward. And I figured that out by uh, doing some tests. Actually, that was from my submarine tests before I gave up. So it's kind of funny that to avoid working on submarines, I essentially made a submarine. This does not go up and down. Um, my idea is to lure it in with uh, with with an airship. Uh, the reason it doesn't go up and down is because I would have... I would have had to make a whole other outer hull that would be stationary while the internal section moves, and that was just too much. I said, hey, that's not... I, I don't need to do that. I just need to lower it down and mine. Though it is big, uh, and I do want to make a smaller, more practical version uh, for survival. So when you mine, everything's going to go in here into this big vault. And I said, hey, you know, sometimes you don't want junk, so I put a, uh, a brass filter here, and I put cobble as the output. So you can put anything you want here, you know, if you're in the nether, you can put netherrack. If you're sick of getting so much netherrack, it's just, you only want to keep the good stuff. I actually had a whole system of uh, conveyors and, um, uh, like, a sorting system here, but it would it would glitch the, the, the drill. So you can see I have the shaft that was going to power that system, but it would just the drill would just stop the working. It was like sometimes, I guess, the something gets corrupted in the structure and until you break the block that's corrupted, it won't move anymore. So I, I just said, hey, screw it. Um, we'll just have this, um, this vault here for now and um, we'll sort it later when we get back to base. That was weird. The vault just kind of looked like it was staying. Okay, so... Enough explanations, let's let's mine. All right, so I'm going to take off the brake, and we're just going to cruise forward. So this is going to send us forward until we get to the wall. And then once we get to the wall, well, we're just going to be digging through it. All right, where are we there? Yeah, we are. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, so that's some, that's some liquid coming in. That's See what that looks like? It's actually coming in the glass there. And through the roof, so we're we're safe behind these three layers of, of walls right now. And you see the cracks are there, so we, it is trying to move forward. It is trying to break this ancient debris. It just takes such a long time, though. Okay, so now it's continuing. There we go. I'll go outside to show you the the water that's coming in over it. Well, there's no water coming over it right now, but. If I were to put some water, okay, there's some water. So that's over it. It's not flowing down. It's flowing down the front, I guess. So that's scary, eh? That's, uh, that water command. Hey, it's not moving forward. Why is that? What's going on? Okay, 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that is kind of scary as water. <laughs> But uh, I've done tests, and uh, it should be okay. It should be. Let's go back out just to make sure. Have we... Okay, we're still drilling. We're still moving forward. You got to have patience. I, I put some ancient debris in there, and um, it takes a long time to mine through. So you guys can see here, I'm shooting out the cobble because, hey, we don't we don't want cobble. We're, you know, we're classy. We got... We have other bricks. I mean, maybe you do want cobble. If you do want cobble, that's okay. You can just change the filter. All right, let's see what the water looks like inside. So you see, eventually we'll just kind of move past the water and every time we move, it's gonna kind of drip down, but eventually we'll get through it. And now it's just stone from here on out, so it's going to be uh, a lot faster. So yeah, so this is my uh, my fluid proof drill, the the Giga drill. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out how to make this fluid proof. I had a lot of iterations and a lot of uh, a lot of failures. Just you know, with any build, I think, uh, geez, I don't know how many iterations I have to go through before I get something that's uh, that's stable. So this has been tested quite a bit. I haven't showed you the turning. I'll show you the turning while we're in the... Um, I mean, we're surrounded. Yeah, see, well, there's stone everywhere. So we're completely encased. But we can turn. So I'll go ahead and turn. So you see, it takes a while uh, because it's cutting through the stone. This water is... Ooh. Okay, that's weird. I don't like that. Um, yeah. Well, it's kind of... Is this doing anything, this water? Okay, that's... Hmm. I think that's okay. Because it's only on the sides. Well, that water is actually inside of the ship. So, that's going to be something I'll have to work on. But it's... Uh, doesn't seem to be causing trouble. It just better not fall on any of this redstone because that'll ugh, that'll be a problem. I'll show you what it looks like down here though when I'm turning. Uh, if I can get down here. Uh, what if I go around? Yeah, this is the mechanism while it's turning, so this is gonna eventually line up with this and uh, it'll stop once it gets there. So turning takes a while. It's not something you want to do all the time while you're mining, but it has that feature. So the Giga Drill is very versatile. Okay, so we made it and there's no water in the ship. So I mean, I mean I consider that a success, maybe a little bit of a buggy success, but still a success. You know, the the ship hasn't been ruined, we didn't get wet. I mean, we chose to swim in the water, we didn't get drenched. And it wasn't in the middle, it was on the sides. So this is, um, I mean, this is, I guess you could say, it's still a work in progress, but it's not something that I'd be uh, I'd be ashamed of, uh, of presenting. I mean, I'm showing it to you guys right now, so, I mean, can't be terrible. Okay. Cool. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my Giga drill. I'll uh, share this the uh, schematics in the description, and uh, that's it. So uh, thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.